Hey folks, and welcome to the new TerraCast, Terra's only community podcast. Each episode, Kyoji and myself, Calixian, bring you the latest news, events, and general awesomeness from the world of Terra Online. So sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, and welcome to TerraCast. This week we're going to talk about the beta that we just had. We're also going to talk about the upcoming beta, of course, since it's every other week now. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the updates that are coming out in Korea, and whether or not they'll have an impact on us in the near future. What else do we have, Kyo? Uh, well, we're going to go over uh, some achievements that we saw in the... Uh first close beta from individuals. Uh, several guilds did some uh, very impressive things. Uh, talk about some bugs we've experienced while playing, uh, some minor hiccups that happened, and uh, I guess we'll just uh, get into it. So, close beta Indeed. test one was February 10th through the 12th, and uh, I believe, I want to say on the Seventh, we got in, if I'm doing my math correct, or seventh or eighth, we got in for a quick stress test because Frogster actually had a sneak peek event that completely flopped. <laughs> and uh, so in order to prepare, um, we got a quick dress rehearsal of the closed beta uh, what and mass described as and uh, that was a four hour event and so we got characters in the level 10 ish range and uh, we are able to see some of the game I guess to start out we should I guess we should talk about several things during the CPE we used uh, Pando in order to download and install the client, which um, <laughs> actually, to me, that worked excellent. I mean, a lot of people do not enjoy Pando for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of people confuse it as spyware, all of this nasty stuff. Um, I've never had an issue with it. When you're done with it, you can just uninstall it. And that's what I've done in the past. So um, we have a new launcher and downloader that we are able to test. And uh, I'm not going it to... Also, it, it also does the patches as well, which... Yeah. That's a huge difference from Pando. Pando was... It just gave you the basic files, then you had to run the installer. Whereas this actually actively installs things as you go. So it's... It's a... I mean... Pando was okay, but this is more of a final product kind of thing, which is great to see. Yeah, it's great to see, but I gotta say, uh, it was awful. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, to that said, <laughs> they had yeah. some problems with it. Uh, at my household, between myself and my wife, um, we downloaded the client, because, you know, part of the beta process is you've got to test everything. We downloaded the client on my desktop, her desktop, and her laptop. Uh, my laptop's out of commission, or else we would have had a fourth machine downloading it. And it, every, like, 10% you would get downloaded, if you were lucky, you would get an error. I know initially she started the download, the launcher exited, and she lost all of her install. It took us about two to three days to actually download the game, and uh, we're on DSL, not the fastest connection, but uh, I can make Skype calls, obviously, without an issue. I play MMOs, I play shooters. DSL's never gotten in the way. There was no reason for it to take three days. And on top of that, my desktop and her laptop, first time uh, after finishing download, 
they were able to launch the game. Her desktop wasn't able to launch the game. And so we re-downloaded it overnight, and for some reason it took only a day the second time, and we tried both P2P on and off. After installing it a second time, it still didn't work. So we went from like a 60% chance of this you know application running efficiently down to 50. So it would, to us, it was a 50-50 shot whether or not you were able to use the launcher and install and have the game run properly. We ended up moving the files over onto our desktop by the time the beta started, but that launcher needs to get fixed. I mean, yeah. there's no think- coding that. Uh, Star Wars, I think, had a worse launcher at launch, <laughs> but that's something that just needs to get taken care of. For sure. Quickly. And I think a lot of people experience very similar issues, so they definitely will be looking at that pretty heavily. Myself, I had to... I got to 59% four times, and every time it basically just went 59 and 0%, 1%. <laughs> and 2% and so forth and so on. So yeah, it took me three days as well and several attempts. For the first part of it, it was sort of a, you know, it would download 2% and then it would come up with an error. You had to shut everything down, start it up again, log back in, and it would download another 2% and you, you couldn't just leave it and let it go. You had to actually watch to make sure it didn't get a hiccup because it would stop. <laughs> so that was a bit frustrating, but yeah, they fixed that part of the problem. And unfortunately, people were still issue- experiencing issues. I think it was a, I don't know, HTTP transport issue or uh, some other, I guess, server side issue. I'm thinking, but hopefully that will be all well and good for. I haven't tried patching the game yet because the patch is out now for the next beta. I we'll will see say how that flawless. Goes. Okay. I installed it first time. It was done within six hours. Granted, it was only a. 7 gigabyte uh, file but it was absolutely flawless and it worked fine Good for me so I don't know if everything's been fixed but uh, that was definitely broken and uh, I hope that uh, when we have to uninstall and then reinstall for uh, uh, pre-character creation and name reservation that uh, everything will be fine kind of hoping we won't have to do that, actually. Kind of hoping they just keep rolling out the patches until we get to the live patch and then you just need to have an active account to be able to play it. That would save a lot of headaches and issues, too, for everybody who has already, you know, early access to the betas and all that. That would be ideal. Yes, it would. And then, uh, I guess, what else should we talk about with the starting of the closing or the closed beta? I mean... I guess we should just uh, acknowledge that we originally started on the Dragonfall server, and within that first hour, Dragonfall fell. <laughs> it fell it hard. Fell hard. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had we got. I think I got my character Lancer up to level four ish. Yeah, I, got, I had a level five character, and then they just took it all down. Hopefully that character's still existing somewhere and having a good time, but we'll see what happens. So, uh, allegedly there was hardware issues from what we heard from NMAS, and uh, they got that sorted out, but we re-rolled on Serpentis. And then a few of us in the guild, while we were waiting for a new server to open, we rolled on Arachnia server, I believe is what it was called, yeah. and somehow we got thrown in this weird loop where we couldn't log into another server because we were already in the queue for uh, the uh, server that we rerolled on again, and if we would log in and then select change server, then click on the server we were rolling on, the client would close and we'd be stuck. 
So I ended up having to wait in the queue for an hour for the Arachnia server, delete the character, and then go back and select a Serpentis uh, server as my main and re-roll again from scratch. Yeah. So That was frustrating for a lot of people. There was, If you were following it at all, there was a huge thread on the main forums about that. Um, it seems that the issue was that it automatically defaulted to wanting to log you into the last server you had logged into, and because there were a queue on both servers, you weren't able to switch from one queue to another. And I guess that was part of the problem. Um, hopefully that will also be looked into and repaired. I'm just checking the patch notes to see, but there's something that indicates that they've, uh, you know, fixed well, that, that particular detail, but it may not occur again. That issue was done by the end of the night, but yeah. at the same time, it was very frustrating at the time. So yeah, it was a bit of a rocky start, but uh, that said and done, everybody kind of got into the game at, at one point or another, and... Well, overall impressions were pretty good. I mean, we were lacking the high-definition patch, the textures that we uh, are accustomed to seeing in screenshots and videos and that sort of thing from Korea. However, um, the game still looked great, even without the high-definition, high de- high HD patches. Um, I think a lot of people who had never really played the game before and got a chance to in the beta were pretty impressed. I've heard good things. I've heard mixed reviews, good things, bad things. Uh, there's a lot of people who have played a lot of other games out there, and you know this might not be their cup of tea necessarily, but uh, for those of, oh, those who did try it, the, the resounding thing you keep hearing is, wow, that combat, that was, that was really fun. That really yeah. makes the game. And it's true. And, uh, being that I played in the CPE last year, I wasn't able to see the first instance or really the basilisk area last year. And uh, I played a Lancer last year as well. And uh, being able to see that content uh, was amazing. As a Lancer tank was the most fun I've ever had tanking, period. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was awesome. And uh, I got to experience uh, dueling some Basilisk with my wife as she was playing a Mystic, and we had loads of fun. So I can't wait to go past the level 22 cap, which uh, I don't think we have a confirmation on what the level cap will be for uh, uh, CBB or CPB. Sorry, uh, yeah, closed think, beta two. Um, so, yeah, we don't have a, any concrete answer on what the cap will be, but let's assume or let's guess anyway that it will probably take us into celestial planes, do a lot of group group things there, and take us probably into the uh, Popolion area where the sort of undead stuff is. Now, it probably won't take us deep into that, but maybe. F- you know, end around the first town or something along those lines because they also want to test PvP for the next beta. So that'll take a lot of people's attention off of questing and get them sort of in one area doing some PKing and <laughs> all that jazz. Well, uh, do we have confirmation whether or not those servers are changing to PvP or their new servers that are going to be updated that are PvP servers? We don't have any confirmation. It's really hard to say. Kind of, if you read one source, it kind of sounds like they're just going to turn on the PvP switch. You know, they just basically make it open world PvP. But it could be you'd have to roll a new level one character uh, from scratch on a new server that's strictly PvP. Either way, um, I think they'll want to allow people the weekend to work on the the group content. It does take a bit of time to to get some of those quests down, but realistically they they don't want the beta to probably go all the way to the max level cap of the game. They probably want to keep it sort of paced well. You will see a huge change in the difficulty level after you hit a certain point. Usually, you know, once you start trying to solo things uh, past level 30, does become a more of a challenge, so you'll see, like, a lot of people were complaining about how, oh my gosh, the game's so easy, but 
that's, you know, Island of Dawn. You leave the Island of Dawn, it gets a little bit trickier, but still not very difficult. But as you get higher in level, you will see a difference. You will definitely see this difference. And I can speak on that from my experience in the Korean beta as well. But, uh, yeah. It's... It's tricky. I figure probably by the third beta we'll see... We'll be moving into the area that's sort of south of Velika, which is... Um, if I'm not mistaken, level 28, 29, 30, maybe 31, 32. Nope, wait, 31, 32 would be uh, sort of cutthroat hardware and all that. But anyway, yeah. I guess moving on with the closed beta 2, um, other than the patch notes, which we're about to go over here in a minute, we do have one confirmation from uh, Chris Hager saying that uh, they're not going to put any repercussions out for player killing or killing anyone. Um, he said, personally, uh, he uh, thinks there should be a risk-reward uh, system instead of having a straight-out gang fest, which... Not a huge open world PvP guy, but I would tend to agree with him. And I kind of enjoyed the uh, original outline for the outlaw system where the more people you would kill, you would get debuffs, uh, and it would be an upward struggle and a lot more difficult for you to remain an outlaw or whatever. So. Well, yeah, so I guess PvP will be something to look forward to, to just test it. Even if I don't plan to roll on a PvP server, I would like to just try it, see what the open-world PvP is like. I'm not a fan of getting ganked myself, but hey, you know, it's part of the game, especially with a game like Terra, where it's skill-based. Mm -hmm. All right, and then um, on the 14th, uh, which was three days ago while we're recording this, um, we got a uh, message from the new community manager, uh, Mina, I believe is how you enunciate that, um, say, uh, just updating us with the patch notes for the closed beta 2. Um, and do you want to run down the fixed issues? Sure. I'll so, okay, I'll, just, I'll go through the patch very briefly here. It says that uh, while you're waiting for the second beta to arrive on the 24th, you can start patching the beta client. So this is the patch we were talking about earlier. It's 7 gigs, so it's pretty substantial. And uh, you're going to want to give yourself some time to download it, obviously. So if you haven't already, uh, maybe you may want to look into that. I mean, you still have a week, but hey, you know. The uh, fixed items are contact support button. It now brings you to the Terra customer service page on the website. I have no idea what it used to do, but that's where it'll take you now. Uh, moving the mouse pointer no longer skips the opening cinematic movie. I guess it was skipped before when you moved the mouse. It didn't happen to me, but I usually skip it anyway because I've seen it so many times. The LFG, VanArk, and Party Alert chat channels are now being moderated. I guess they weren't being watched before, so uh, some, some things were probably taking place there that shouldn't have or whatnot. The description for Soothing Romb has been corrected. It doesn't go into details. I don't really know what it was before. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess that's been fixed. When trying to create a new character, you'll now be notified if you've reached the maximum character n number of characters on your account uh, for that particular closed beta test. Before, you would go through the whole process of creating the character. You'd name it, you'd submit it, you'd go, the screen would go black, and, oh, too late, you can't create a character, uh, you've already got one, so that's it. And it would take you back to the screen after you've done all that work, which is really frustrating for some people who didn't realize there was a cap of one character for that first beta, so. Uh, and also, this build replaces some existing textures with high-resolution textures, so what they're doing is sort of gradually bringing in the high-res textures. I can only imagine what the size of the client would have been, I mean, it was already huge to begin with, but if you had to add all the high-res textures too, that would have been even bigger, so doing it in gradual patches is probably a really smart way to do it anyway. And they will display if you set the graphics options to maximum. Of course, they still don't have the anti-aliasing and all that stuff, but you do that through your own uh, graphics card uh, center. 
Um, there, it also has a list of known issues. The client may crash when trying to log into the server after exiting the server queue screen. So this is what Keo and I were talking about earlier. Uh, when you, d If you were stuck in a queue for Ar Arachnia, for example, but your character was on Serpentis, you would uh, try to leave the queue for Arachnia and the server would just <laughs> kaput. So that is a known issue. They're working on it. Hopefully it'll be fixed by the next beta. We'll see. The cinematic for Circle of Wagons Quest will know will not render uh, environmental detail if your distant environmental detail setting is below the max setting of 6. How anybody knows this, I'm not sure, because that quest would not have been really in the scope of the test. I guess some people just kind of went forward and and did some of that stuff, but that that's something that takes place in Papoleon. It's uh, a little bit further ahead. Uh, outlaw quests point you to NPC Carrieris, <laughs> who is currently not labeled or clickable and may not appear on the minimap. That's a known issue. Um, by outlaw quests, do you think they're talking about PvP or? Yeah, I believe that's the outlaw okay. system. So yeah. I'm sure there's some kind of reward system initially, but being that we just read that statement from Chris Hager. Uh, saying there would be no risk reward system in the current test, I'm, I'd be willing to bet that that's uh, where that is coming from. Indeed, indeed. Uh, when changing locations, party members may arrive in different channels. This is a known issue, so they're going to fix that. Thank goodness, it's been plaguing us for years now. Um, it would be really great if if you're in a party and you switch to another zone if everybody was in the same channel because then you're like, uh, what channel are you in? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. The contaminated well area in the quarantine zone map has the incorrect environment textures. Good to know. Uh, that'll be, I'm sure, addressed at some point. Canceling a teleport scroll mid-use will cancel the teleportation but consume the item still. Ooh, that sucks. But, yeah, it's a known issue. They know about it. They're going to look at it. The quest objective and text of the promised support quest conflict. The alt key registers as a double press with each single press. Use the left alt key in the interim. Oh, sorry, did I say that? Yeah, the right alt key registers as a double press. Use the left one. I've always used the left one, so I don't know. I mean, I, I never encountered that, uh, but that would be really annoying if it just no. popped your window open for a second. Uh, another known issue, which has been... I didn't realize it was actually an issue, is that piglings, and I can say from experience, uh, red caps and a few other sort of smaller mobs, occasionally drop huge amounts of gold. Uh, the piglings, you know, it was only like, you know, 600. But when you're on the new island, 600 is a lot of gold. Uh, exactly. The red caps, they can drop up to like 3k. And that's only one zone further on, you know, in the Fey Forest. Uh and those red caps are like a piece of cake you just knock over uh, you know nine at a time and sometimes they'll drop 3k it's just like present <laughs> yes <laughs> well um, fine with that you know the occasional mob being loaded i mean <laughs> exactly and it's I mean, part of it, rng you know right i guess it is a known issue even though i I'd, I'd rather they didn't fix it but hey battlegrounds are not currently implemented in this guild in this build wow uh, so, um, that's, I think that was not only a known issue, but a known. <laughs> I think most people knew that. Uh, well, I mean, uh, they start at, what, level 48? 40. In great. In I think it's Korea. 40. There's one that's at 40 and one that's at 48, I think. But yeah, it's way later in the game, so it's not a surprise that they're not currently implemented. Oh, and also the Mystic's Thrall Summon may re-engage monsters even after its summoning Mystic dies. So... You summon a, you're a mystic, you summon a, a thrall, send it into combat, oh, you die, and you get rezzed, that guy could still be running at those mobs and, you know, messing them up, so, yeah, just something to keep in mind, it's a known issue, they'll probably look into that and try to have it fixed. Let's hope these things get fixed pretty quickly, but, yeah. knowing what we know about the game, most of these things will have to go first to Korea, because that's where the programmers are, and then they have to update the the actual client and then send it to us so we'll see yeah um i really hope that we can uh eventually see the battlegrounds um i think 
in the North American release, they'd be wise to bring down the level cap for the battlegrounds or somehow put it in chunks. So, you know, like a 10 through 20, a 20 through 30, 30 through 40 different tiers. I think that would be really wise for them to do just indeed because uh so many people want this game to become an e-sport you see so many people posting about it uh i don't necessarily agree but that would definitely uh feed some of those people the uh yeah content that they want and uh making them hold out until level 48 I think you'd be risking losing some of those players, so... Exactly. Or 40, or 48, sorry. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I, I think PvPers will have their fill of PvP uh, because it's going to be open world. They can attack whoever they want, whenever they want. But for people who want some PvP on a PvE server, um, with the exception of, you know, waging wars with your guild, guild wars, for lack of a better word, um, not to be confused with the game with the same name, you have these battlegrounds, and if you can only access them at level 40, it kind of hinders your ability to get some PvP and just to break up the usual you know, when you log in, so uh, yep. if, if they can look at that, maybe, uh, that would be great but, uh, other than that Um, I guess we should also make note that uh, the collector's edition is available in the Enmas store, the physical collector's edition, and it has not shown up in any retail store yet. And Amazon is the first retailer besides Enmas to reveal what mount they will be having. No screenshot yet, but we know that it will be a Pinto uh, in-game mount, which is a breed of horse that's typically spotted. Aw, oh, yeah. Wikipedia, best friend. <laughs> spotted horse, so that's yep. cool. We've recently seen some pictures of other horses, but we'll get into that when we get to the uh, Korean update that's coming out soon. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what other retailers will have for mounts. I don't know about a blue and yellow one yet, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what Best Buy does. <laughs> I guess this should also be tacked on to Close Beta 1. We saw quite a few achievements uh, within the Close Beta. The uh, Terret Guild, which is uh, the Terra Reddit Guild, they were able to successfully down a level 32 uh, world boss and they have a video up on the tarot uh, subreddit which I moderate um, and then you said a another guild was able to take out a level 38 so yeah the other guild um, the guild by the name of robot house on the arachnia server they were able to down a world boss that was level 39 sort of up in the uh, Cutthroat Harbor area up north that way. Um, it's a level 39 giant mantis creature. You'll see some of those uh, smaller versions of them anyway for regular quests, but this is a, a giant version of one of these. And uh, everybody, of course, was level 22, which is the cap for the for the beta. So taking down a level 39 not too bad of an achievement, if I don't say so myself. Um, or if I do. What did uh, they have as a tank? Because I know the Terra... Reddit Guild said that they ended up using a warrior tank just because the Lancers couldn't soak up all the damage because too much would bleed out into it, so they needed a warrior in order to dodge tank the majority of the time. Well, it looks like they were using a Lancer. I see that it ended up on the floor a few times, but uh, they did have some heals. So, yeah, I guess Lancer would be the the way to go in this particular case. They they do mitigate a lot of damage, but like you said, early on, if you're fighting something really higher level, you're, it's not going to mitigate enough, so you'd really have to power through with the heals. Alright. 
um, I guess next we want to move on to uh, a survey was done both on Reddit and the official forums. They were asking people uh, what race and what class they ended up rolling. The user ad hoc, I guess is what he's going by in-game, fielded this survey and got 823 responses, if I recall. Yes, that's correct. And uh, it's actually quite shocking. Um, The top five race class combos, which is shockingly different, because if I recall correctly... Slayer is the least popular class in Korea. I forget where I actually read that at. I don't know if that was from uh, Terra fans, but... Uh, I, have, I have seen a similar chart to the one you're about to go into uh, f- after the Korean beta and shortly after the uh, the servers went live there. Uh, it may have actually been a translation from Korea, actually, that I'm thinking of, that uh, Lucian or one of them from Terra fans would have put posted up there. But, uh, yeah, I remember seeing something very similar to yours. Yeah, and uh, so I guess the top five race class combos. Uh, the top race class was Kastanic Slayer, followed by Kastanic Warrior, then a High Elf Priest, then a Mon Lancer, Ellen Priest, and then Kastanic Sorcerer. Which, um, yeah, Pretty surprised actually, um, because well, Archer is really underrepresented. I found in those stats, and it's it seems to me that that would be a really popular choice, going with the sort of action combat first person shootery kind of feel. But uh, the Berserker ended up being the least popular class, which is kind of shocking to me as well. Lancer is the most popular, and then uh, Kastanic, of course, is the most popular class from this survey. Uh, this is not a survey done by NMAS or anything we've seen from them. And uh, Baraka is the least popular race. So oh, Barakas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, were you as shocked as I was? I mean, I was really a taken aback. A little bit, yeah. Uh, especially knowing what I know about the the um, development of the Berserkers, they seem to me to be a heavily favored class for PvPers because of the uh, of the sheer numbers of d- that they put out for damage. It's ridiculous. Um, they're very slow. They're slow to level, slow to play. Their attacks feel sluggish. Of course, you feel the weight of the axe because it's a big weapon. It's big and heavy. So... All in all, I think that uh, you'll see more of them once the servers go live and people realize, wow, these things can put out some serious numbers, especially against you know, clothies and that sort of thing. So in group PvP, they're going to be indispensable, really, because of their slow but extremely powerful attacks. Same with, with sorcerers. Just interesting results compared to what we've seen and heard from Korea. So we will see, I guess. Yeah, and, I'm uh, surprised actually quite surprised there weren't more you know, DPS classes, strict DPS classes like, you know, Sorcerer, Archer, that sort of thing. It's just, uh, you know, range, I guess range DPS would be the word I'm looking for. Uh, yeah. People seem to go more for warriors. Uh, I know a lot of people in our guild rolled warriors. But, um, yeah, in the notes below, when this gets posted, we'll put a link to this, uh, race class survey and so you guys can check it out and there's a whole bunch of pie charts if you guys really like pie charts and stuff um so you can see the breakdown it's pretty cool i enjoyed it it's pretty colors and then i guess to wrap up everything we're going to uh, do what we said of what two podcasts ago that we weren't going to focus on was the <laughs> development in korea Yep. But this is a pretty major content update. The Queen no, of the Argons. Not only is it a major update, it's also it's coming out very soon. It, it just sort of... All the details kind of just 
hit the floor, uh, I guess, on Valentine's Day. And um, it should be launching reasonably soon. I'll, I'll just go through some of the uh, translations. This is a translation from Steparu, whose videos you're probably familiar with. And uh, he gave it to Amira, who posted on TerraFans. Basically, this is a Korean Terra patch, content patch. It's going to hit Korean servers by the end of this month, February. So, you know, they announced it midway through the month, and it's going to launch at the end of the month. It's uh, also a two-part patch. And right, exactly. The second part will be implemented at a later date. So, yeah, uh, I don't know how much uh, we will actually see in our North American version, but well, that's that's really the big question. That's what we really. That's why we're covering it right now because. Um, well, let's go into the details of the patch, and we'll just see what is feasible to have in our version. Um, the main thing, I guess, would be level cap. Right now, in Korea, the level cap is 58. With this expansion, the level cap will be taken all the way to 60. And long time ago, back in the day, <laughs> when we first started tracking Terra, they always talked about the level 60 being the cap. Uh, right now, we currently don't know officially what the level cap is. Uh, they haven't announced it yet, but if it is indeed level 60, that pretty much tells us that, well, either they're going to be out of sync with Korea, or this content patch will be in it. Yeah. Um, so, so, it basically follows the storyline between the, uh, the war uh, between the Valkyrie Federation and the Argons, which is the main storyline that you'll be uh, following as you get into the game. It's stor the story focuses on the heroine named Hasmina. Um, now, we don't know a lot about these characters yet or anything, because, of course, this is from the Korean uh, you know, version, which we can't really read. <laughs> and uh, also, we, we don't know if the, if the character names are the same in North America or uh, Korea. Exactly. But um, I think it would be a safe bet to say that this was really the end of the Level 60 content, because we have seen as Mia on uh, several iterations of uh, cover art and posters and things of that nature. She looks very similar to uh, one of the E3 uh, videos that we saw a few years ago. Where Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this will also open up uh, several areas, uh, content region areas with that were currently... Uh, either closed for access or not really finished. I'm re not really certain because nobody's really had a chance to explore the other continents, especially the northern side of Shara. The map, you can see the picture on uh, Terrafans, which shows kind of the new areas highlighted in red, and it's sort of the northern coast of, of Shara and one zone sort of just west of the Isle of Dawn on Shara, which... I was under the impression it was desert, so we'll see what that's like. A couple pictures of some of the new uh, zones and instances. The Temple of Valder is one of the instances, and the abandoned hall. The art for it, the uh, concept art for it, looks really good. Uh, yeah. So we'll see what, what the actual screenshots look like when they finally come out. Uh, gives you a few new bosses. So there's uh, Cafricon, a humanoid demon beast with a huge sword and black wings. Cocoon, which is a large cross between a kuma and a gorilla. Kumas are those big blue guys uh, that you may or may not have encountered in the beta uh, in the Celestial Plains area. And Guardian of the Artifact, which, <laughs> according to the translation, appears like a mechanical type of monster similar to the StarCraft II unit Dragoon. Uh, <laughs> okay. Also, with the level 60 cap comes level 60 skills. All the classes are getting a couple new skills to uh, you know, add on to their arsenal up until they get to level 60. We won't go into each and every one in detail. You can read them on the TerraFan site, but they look pretty exciting. Some of the... I'm noticing that some of the skills are upgraded versions of other skills that you learn earlier in the game. Not, not to say that they're, it's the same skill, just a little bit better, but for example, the Lancer gets something called Giga Chain, which is like the chain skill, except it chains up to six targets at once and binds them in place, which sounds awesome. It's it almost does. like crowd control, yeah. 
and then the Warriors getting a uh, major, well, I, I don't want to say major because we haven't experienced it, but they're getting a stack system, which allegedly would be similar to the combo point system uh, for WoW Rogues. Uh, some charging stack skills, uh, which include some Venom blades, then consuming the stack points, which are Battle Cries and Wind Spirits. Or, and, sorry, uh, Wind Split. Exactly, and uh, actually of particular interest to me was the archer skills. Basically, uh, as an archer you get traps, and those traps can be used um, you plant them on the ground, mobs run over them, and they do an effect. Well, now, at level 60, you're going to get traps attached to arrows. So you can basically <laughs> bring the traps to the enemy in a much quicker and more efficient fashion. That should be very interesting. They have three different types. They have the uh, the paralyzed trap arrow, explosive trap arrow, and spider trap arrow. So one slows them down, one does damage, and one paralyzes them. So those will be really effective. I can see them being used a lot in uh, PvP as well. But enough about the skills. Um, we also have a few other great things coming, like a reputation system. Now I know a lot of people are rolling their eyes. Oh boy, reputation system. It was something that we never really thought Terra would have. Now they're adding it. It doesn't seem like there are multiple factions or anything like that. It's just a, a single reputation system. You might even want to consider it a you know a daily quest uh, chain where you can build up points. It's it's optional. It's not part of the story. Uh, you can I mean I'm sure they've worked it in somehow, but it's not mandatory. You don't have to do it. If you want to, you can. It just gives you some great you know new gear, crystals, um, things like that. So. You know, definitely something to look into. Uh, oh, speaking of crystals, they also have new crystal slots on earrings and jewelry. So you can uh, upgrade those with green crystals, which look pretty spiffy. Not sure what exactly they do yet. We don't uh, we don't have any detail yet, really, on what the new crystals will do. But I assume they're probably very similar to the other crystals that we would be seeing, uh, just enhancing slightly your gear. What else do we have? Oh, uh, level 12 and 13 uh, grade items. So, if you were playing the beta and you noticed, you, you know, your first Island of Dawn gear was uh, tier 1, and then when you got off that Island of Dawn, it was tier 2, and then later on, you, you might have seen some tier 3 drops. Uh, throughout the game, it progresses like that, and those, like, to upgrade, for example, to enhance your, your gear, you have to use the same grade of... of item and now they're adding level 12 and 13 or grade 12 and 13 items with the level 60 cap which is great and uh, most of the new equipment is tradable according to this yeah that's awesome and uh, I wanted to say these uh, these mounts look awesome uh, hey we've got like a centurion looking horse we've got like a I don't know what you'd want to call it, more of a necro horse where it's black and it's got like blue, like purpley blue veins going through it. We've got zebras and panthers. It just looks awesome. Yeah, the mounts look great. Um, one of the chances we'll see a zebra mount for one of the stores, uh, physical box, I want. I'm yeah. thinking maybe a zebra or, or some other, you know, patterns of horses. We got a pinto, a spotted horse. So maybe something like a, you know, a black one or like a red one. And the uh reputation quest that gives rewards. We have a few screenshots of the rewarded armors and they look really good, especially the uh armor for the uh, berserker. Uh, on Terra fans, it looks uh, pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. Indeed. One of the things that's sort of, I guess, controversial or uh, a little bit eyebrow-raising is the large-scale PvE content, the Dark Rift that they're adding. Just let me know if you've heard something like this before. It's huge-scale PvE content. A Dark Rift opens up in high-level areas. Uh, you kill monsters to close the rift. Entering the Dark Rift area will automatically give you the quest. The auto party system will 
add you to the group or alliance already in the area. Rewards get better based on the amount of players participating in the event. It requires 20 players at least to clear. It has multiple phases, and each phase has a special boss, and PvP equipment can be purchased using the reputation points gained from the Dark Rift. Does that sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> Gee. It does not sound like a game I had no fun with uh, <laughs> a year ago. I can um, say that for sure. Um, definitely hoping that it'll be a lot more fun with, with Terra's combat system. We'll see how uh, that works. I would hope so. I just don't want to see invasions like we saw in Rift. Uh, I personally disliked the invasion system, but I liked the idea of rifts opening up. So, we'll yeah, see. I think a lot of people did. It's just, how are they going to get around the, uh, the blatant sort of, hey, uh, <laughs> this has been done before. <laughs> I, I, I hear a lot of that already, and yeah, we'll see. But I, I wonder how this will work. It says it takes at least 20 players to clear. The more players there, the better. Are we going to see some server stability issues when you have 100 people in one area with this action combat skill? Or, or even trying to get to the mob with player collision? How, how are you even going to hit anything? Well, is this the answer of everybody crying, I need to raid at endgame? Is that what this is going to fill the void for? Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I find raids back on the topic. I think I've talked about this in one of the episodes in the past, but essentially a lot of people say, you know, raiding is essential to an MMO, but the game itself has raids. They're just not, you know, 100-man raids. They're small tactical teams of five. You have to balance it out based on class, based on what's going to happen in the instance, and you have to be very smart about it. And it's not going to be any less challenging than a raid, it's just less people. Which, to me, is a blessing. It's so hard to get a group of 16 people together at a single time for, you know, God knows how many hours, four or five, whatever, and and trying to, you know, manage bathroom breaks and all this jazz, when you can just do five people, small group, maybe that have worked together for a long time, and just go in there strategically and take care of it. So, uh, do you think these dark rifts will uh, be like a 10 minute and you're done thing or do you think they're going to last uh, quite a while if they recommend uh, 20 people to clear I really couldn't say I'd like to see it in action first just to get an idea it depends on how many how many phases these have and how difficult the bosses are. If they're huge world bosses at each phase that take, you know, 20 minutes each or whatnot, then yes, it's going to take some time. But most likely it's going to be something that's fairly quick. I would say probably under a half hour to just from start to finish to... You know, depending on people. I mean, if you have less people, it'll take, obviously, a lot longer. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm hoping it won't take too long to do one because it might dissuade people from taking part. Or if they're coming in halfway through, they're like, well, I already missed... You know, two phases. I'm not going to bother. Uh, yeah. If it's if it's a shorter event, people will just be like, "Oh wow, here I am. I'm going to take part and just go to it." Yeah. And uh, then the last parts of the patch is a new currency system, an auction house system. Currency is now going to be broken down into gold, silver, and bronze, which. You know, some people are like, oh, you know, that's going to be great and whatnot, but I've talked to other people and it just doesn't make sense because no matter what, stuff's still going to be a certain amount of gold. We're not right. gaining anything by having silver and bronze added. Nobody's sure. going to ask for, you know, oh, I want this to be... 100 gold and 50 silver. People are just going to be like, give me 100 gold. Who cares exactly. about this extra stuff? Uh, I think that's a step in the wrong direction for the game. Uh, because well, What it does, though, is it, it takes away from these massive amounts of money. Like Towards the end of the game, you're going to have millions and millions of a single currency. Like You're going to be basically having like a, walking around with a bag full of pennies. Whereas with a gold system and a silver system and a, and a 
you know, copper system, if you will, it's going to. But you're still going to be the numbers. Yeah. You're still going to be broken down in hundreds. So instead of having right. a million gold, you're going to have nine thousand eight hundred gold, ninety nine silver, ninety nine bronze. So is it really even accomplishing anything? What it will change is the size of the numbers. It'll be a little more manageable. Something that, for example, that might be 50,000 of the current currency on the broker will now be 50 gold. It's not really designed to fix anything. It's just, the, the whole point of it is just to reduce the massive numbers, basically. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I don't understand why it would be needed. Because, I don't know, once you get into your level high 50s, you know, and eventually 60, uh, I highly doubt you're going to be peddling stuff in bronze and silver. You're going to be using gold. So, if anything, you know, they should reduce the price of stuff across the board, you know, and not give you initially as much gold and drops. So, the problem isn't the amount that you... Well, the problem is the amount you get throughout the game. Uh, just economically, MMOs aren't set up in practical senses. You know, when we're level 22, we're spending like several thousand on just junk. You know, the... Uh, what is it called? The identification scroll that you would buy. Yeah, exactly. That was 5,000 gold for uh, me to unlock a level like 13, 15 green. So instead of it being 5,000 gold, why can't we have it cost like 50 gold? And we have a severe reduced amount of gold being picked up as you progress. So instead of running around picking up 100 gold at level 1, why aren't we picking up 2 and 3 gold or 100 gold, 20 gold, something like that? I think that would be a better solution than implementing these arbitrary... Divisions, yeah. yeah. Well, the, there is one other factor which would be why they're doing it as well is because it's what we're used to. It's, it's a North Americanized way of of keeping track of currency in almost all games right now, you see that. The, the big long string of single currency that you see in a lot of uh, Korean games and, and Eastern MMOs is not something that North American players really appreciate. It, it really boils down to exactly the same thing, like you said. It's, it's the same number, it's just broken down differently. But I think, yeah, one of the other factors that led to that decision would be North Americanizing it, or as they call it, Westernizing. Uh, even though Korea is doing it too. I guess it's exactly. just a, simpli a simplification. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I, it would be great if they could just reduce the currency altogether, uh, reduce prices across the board, especially early in the game when you have less money. The, the prices don't change. They're the, they're the same as they will be for the rest of the game. So 5000 for an identification scroll is going to be a lot harder on the pocketbook when you're level 15 than when you're level 30. And then the last part of this uh, patch is Pegasus Transportation. Easier transportation system implemented, which allows you to fly directly to other areas without going to main cities. For example, if you're in the Amani main city and you want to travel to a newbie area, you won't need to stop by Velika anymore. You can just directly fly from place to place. Which exactly. I think it's neat. Well, uh, we in the in the last beta, we, a few of us went exploring. We went to we went, did some mountain hopping. We got to Cutthroat Harbor. And we got to the uh, Pegasus Station there, and you can't just take the Pegasus from Cutthroat Harbor and go directly back to where you were questing, which would have been in this case, you know, uh, Crescentia or what have you. So you had to go all the way to Velika first, and then fly from Velika back to Crescentia. Now you will be able to take it just direct to Pegasus from Cutthroat Harbor to Crescentia, which will save A, money, and B, time. 
a lot of time because those Pegasus are pretty slow. They are. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, it was a good episode. We talked about a lot of things about uh, the past, but we do have the future coming up. This weekend we have the uh, next beta test running. Looking forward to seeing more people there. Uh, do you think they'll be adding more people to this test, or just? Uh... Um, I don't know for the simple fact because of the uh, buy to get in the closed beta test uh, thing that we have been experiencing. I want to say yes, but uh, I have a feeling like I mean, in the maybe, back of my head people... that maybe not. Maybe people who um, watched some of the videos that came out or some of the streams who were like on the fence about pre-ordering, maybe they're like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And maybe you know they'll pre-order and have their codes and join us in this test. So we'll probably see a few more people. But yeah, it'll be good. I think uh, we'll have a lot more to talk about it once we see what PvP looks like. That'll be part of our podcast next time, of course. Um, impressions and maybe we'll get some feedback some, from some other PvPers. I have a few uh, ideas for guests we might want to talk to just to get their impressions on the PvP. And uh, I was not able to record any video, like I believe I said in the last beta test, or last podcast of the beta test that just happened, and I hope to be recording some stuff uh, very soon. So um, we will catch you guys on the subreddit, on TerraFans, and also... uh, We have a terracast.ca web blog and forums also up as well. Indeed, www.terracast.ca. And just sign up for an account there. Uh, It's, of course, free. Uh, There's a forum for Terracast people. If you want to listen uh, to the Terracast, you can find it there. Uh, You can also um, chat about the podcast, give us suggestions, give us some articles that we, if you want, to be aired or whatever, you can either, you know, write it out and we can read it, or you can find out about coming on the show and doing a segment or what have you. Um, also, I want to mention that some people have been ha- experiencing some difficulties with uh, getting the last podcast, and that's because of the bandwidth issue on uh, my current host. We we kind of flooded the server with both a lot of users listening and uh, a large podcast, so the bandwidth was exceeded, and uh, people were getting a a bit of an error trying to access it. We're working on getting that resolved. Um, I'm working with Amira to try to get it hosted differently on her site, or or Terra Fans, of course, and uh, I'll try to get my Podbean back up and running soon, and we'll look at any alternates to try to get it out to as many places as possible. So We'll see you guys on all the other sources. Uh, I try to sit in the Terracast uh, Steam chat room, come by, ask us questions, tell us we're wrong about everything, and uh, we will promptly kick you out of the chat. No, uh, we'll uh, discuss some things, and uh, if we need to make some retractions, uh, we will. And uh, we'll see you guys in game, hopefully. That said, have a good one, everybody, and we'll see you next time. See you.